And welcome back to the Learn to Code podcast. Um, what software skills to learn to get a job? Well, this was um, a question I got on my YouTube channel, which uh, basically asked me if um, this question was from somebody that is just starting out, you know, um, a very young man starting out his programming career, I guess, software development career. And he just asked me what everybody asks around on the internet, you know, what to learn in order to get a job, you know, and, and assuming that job is going to be well paid, obviously. So, um, what did I answer? <laughs> That's the question. It was a comment. Um, so basically, I did some research in order to answer this one. I didn't answer it from the top of my head. Um, Stack Overflow came to the rescue again, you know. Uh, it, it turns out that they do this um, um, this survey every every year, you know, related to what programming language are being used on projects and how many people um, is being hiring for, for so-and-so, you know. So uh, it turns out that there is a list of the 20 most demanded IT and, and software development skills. And there is a rank, actually. So um, here it is. Uh, the most demanded software development skills um, uh, from top number one, let's, let's, just, uh, <laughs> let's just say it, is number one is Python. Python is the most demanded uh, programming language, obviously. And, and technical skill, basically, if you want to assure that you get a job, you want to be confident that you are going to find your place in the market, learn Python, you know? Uh, however, Python is a general purpose language. By itself, it doesn't do anything really uh, significant that any other language like C++ or, or Java or, or Golang, uh, any of those can uh, basically do what Python does. Uh, however, Python is not being learned just to do funny stuff on, uh, or, or, or coding hello world uh, or, or copying files in your, in your computer. No, uh, people are looking Python developers because they are developing websites, mobile apps that require backend. So basically, um, the place of Python in the ecosystem today is uh, most of the time is backend for mobile apps and websites and maybe some other software, you know. Basically working with uh, large databases with a lot of data, uh, working with file systems, you know, the basic stuff. Uh, Python is going to assure you they have a, a job basically. Uh, don't be confused that if you only learn Python and the programming language itself, that's not going to necessarily give you a job. You may need to complement or complete your learning by working out um, on Django, for example. Django is a framework that allows you to build websites and entire websites, not just the front end or the back end, uh, but instead you are allowed to create uh, both, both parts of the of the website, you know, uh, website development with with front end and back end developed on Python is very popular today. You know, uh, as they say, uh, Python uh, it's so hot today. You know. Um, anyways, second place is SQL, SQL or SQL. Uh, a structured query language is being popular for decades now. You know, uh, it's undisputed king of databases uh, and specifically of relational databases. And that's basically what I'm doing right now. Uh, I am a database developer. Uh, there is a lot of jobs for you if you are a uh, proficient, not even great. If you are a, uh, a proficient developer with, uh, you know your way around queries and you have, um, you have designed, implemented and modified uh, databases in the past, uh, you can assure yourself a place in the in the workplace, you know. Um, and I'm working as a database developer with Oracle um, for quite some time. I've been working for them uh, 
uh, with with Oracle, uh, not for Oracle company, I mean uh, for a client that uses Oracle databases. Uh, I've been working for around uh, three months already. And uh, I am I am running on my fourth month, you know. Um, and anyway, the thing is uh, SQL databases and managing data, data engineering, all of that, not just database administration, because before, uh, before the cloud revolution, you know, um, let's say 20 years ago, a database administrator was pretty much like a webmaster. Database DBA means uh, database administrator, and basically the database administrator was the do all and end all of all things uh, regarding the database. You know, uh, he designed, uh, he implemented, he guarded the DDL, that's the data definition language for the database. Uh, he was in charge of securing backups, of creating those backups, uh, um, coming back from the brink of destruction. You know. Um, I worked uh, a long time as a database administrator in the old days, uh, and I and I developed uh, a discipline working as a database uh, administrator. Basically, I w I became the guardian of the data definition language. That's um, that's the code required for me to create a database, to modify a database. Uh, not just in the data itself, because you can do that with updates, you know, um, but creating tables, modifying tables. Uh, um, although a lot of people may think that uh, adding a new column in a database table is going to be easy. Um, well, sometimes it is. Uh, not so easy uh, when you get to delete an entire column on a very big table that has a lot of records, you know. Uh, that's not so simple. And depending on your database engine, uh, especially with Microsoft uh, SQL Server, you may find yourself uh, in very deep shit if you are not careful with what you're doing, basically. So always have in hand uh, your backups, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and having the data uh, available for backup is not just important, uh, it's vital, you know? Because um, I was working for banks back in the day, and uh, let's just say that uh, in the school, they didn't teach us uh, the importance of, of reliable data. I learned that on the job. Why is that? Well, uh, because, you know, losing records on a, on a school project database is, is an inconvenience. Um, but losing records of a monetary transaction in a bank is not inconvenient. Uh, it's, no. Uh, uh, you you are not going to be uh, uh, walking out of there, <laughs> no. Um, so basically, it's not it's not an inconvenience. It's it's uh, it's so vital that data is so vital that uh, let just just imagine if you are can uh, if if some um, if the company uh, wasn't able to process uh, an inter uh, an exchange of money. <laughs> And everything became uh, uh, really bad really quickly, you know. Anyway, I'm digressing. The thing is, um, it's unacceptable, basically. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, losing data in those situations is, in, is unacceptable. You are not allowed to do, to, to allow to basically let that happen. So, anyway, second place is SQL. Third place, uh, with no surprises to anybody, is Java. Java used to be king five years ago. Um, not so hot right now. Yet, uh, it's third place because there is a lot of legacy code out there that depends on Java. And I do nav Java myself. I learned Java back in 2017. My main purpose uh, uh, around those years was to basically uh, I wanted to create Android apps because I just got a phone, an Android phone, and I wanted to make apps. I never built any app. I never learned how to do, to do just that uh, because um, I, I dedicated my time learning Java. A lot of my time went down uh, to learn Java. Uh, but I got distracted with uh, what Java actually is. Java is not a programming language dedicated exclusively to creating mobile apps. Actually, it's a, uh, it's a general purpose language, programming language, 
which means that I was able to connect Java, my Java programs to uh, an SQL database. And I did that with, um, with a, I think it's the OBJ connector, the official, the official, uh, basically a software that you can download to connect to a, um, to a Microsoft SQL Server database. And I was able to do a lot of things that I'm not allowed to do in a database. For example, uh, processing images. Um, back in the day, I was creating, um, I was working with a database that uh, store uh, pictures and fingerprints in the database. And I needed to process those files. Uh, however, since those are not actually files, that data was stored inside uh, uh, database tables in columns, um, as I believe they were called blob object fields. You know, so basically, I uh, I was I was not actually able to uh, manage those files directly. So I was able to process those files using Java. I connected Java to an SQL database. I extracted the bytecode from those fields, and then. Uh, I basically did whatever I wanted to do with those files once I get my hands on them on Java. Java very powerful. There is a lot of libraries to do anything you can imagine. Uh, from from word processing, dude, you can uh, analyze uh, a lot of text. If you are getting uh, data from text sources like uh, comma separated value files, uh, Java is great for doing that. Um, Although I would say that Python is has dethroned successfully Java, uh, the the large amount of legacy code that Java has right now is so big that you are uh, that even now there is a lot of more job to do in Java than there is in Python. However, Python is more demanded today for, because it's more uh, it's very well um, it's very easy to maintain compared to Java. If you don't know your way ar around a Java source code, you can inject a lot of problems uh, inadvertently, you know. Uh, so you need to, to know what you're doing in Java. In Python, not so much. Um, uh, you get more lineage uh, on Python, basically. Number four is JavaScript. Do not surprise to anybody also, JavaScript. Um, and I do know JavaScript because I've been developing websites uh, with JavaScript running on Node.js. <laughs> so basically JavaScript on the web, very popular. And if I ever managed to create a course on, pro on basic, on fundamentals of programming, I will actually go straight to JavaScript because uh, everybody already has JavaScript installed in, in their computers. Why do I know this? Because uh, you need JavaScript to run any website on the web. So. Uh, everybody already includes um, JavaScript. You don't need to install anything. You can just open um, your notepad or whatever text uh, editor you have, write down some uh, HTML page, and then write down your Java code and run your Java code executing, being executed in the website. If you are more programming oriented people, <laughs> you know, if you are more, uh, you know what, you are not a scrub basically. Uh, you can download Node.js and do a lot of more things. Basically, Node.js allows you to use JavaScript uh, as a, as it was uh, similar to Java and Python. Basically, it be it becomes um, it unleashes the power of JavaScript to be run on the on the machine itself. You know, not just uh, limited by the the web browser experience and what this means is that JavaScript with Node becomes what the what Java and Python are basically uh, general programming languages. Uh, however, not many people use uh, JavaScript uh, and Node.js for that general purpose. They use it because they need it uh, in order to run JavaScript in the in the server to render web pages. So basically, Python. Uh, Java and JavaScript, they are general purpose languages themselves. However, uh, in the case of JavaScript and especially Python, the focus of learning that 90% uh, of the time is going to be for developing websites, you know, or even backend 
for other services like mobile apps, basically. Mobile apps and, um, you know, for iOS and Android and websites are going to be uh, top notch. Uh, after that, uh, number five, C++. Uh, I'm not a C++ developer. I'm not going to comment on that one. Uh, number six, C Sharp. I don't have any experience in C Sharp. Uh, I'm not going to comment on that one. However, I do know that uh, C++ and C Sharp, they are widely used on software development for video games. So if you want to become a software developer, you may learn uh, C Sharp in order to work with Unity and C++ in order to work with Unreal Engine. Uh, however, that's all I know about them. I don't really uh, uh, know how to work with those programming languages. Number seven, HTML and CSS. Obviously, if you are working with websites, you are going likely, you are going to learn this pretty early. Basically, uh, HTML will be number one on the learning list. Number two will be CSS. Number three will be JavaScript. In the world of the web development um, industry, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are the, the triforce, basically, the, tr the triad. Um, you need to learn um, and in that order, basically, is HTML first, then CSS to apply styling to your page, and lastly, JavaScript to include behavior to your page. For example, animations. M sometimes uh, you can do animations in CSS. Most of the time you are going to see a lot of code written in JavaScript that allows you to implement complex animations and complex behavior in your website. Uh, for example, if you find uh, what we call a hamburger menu in a website, that is a menu that displays uh, options once you click on it, uh, that's more more likely to be a, a JavaScript uh, uh, code there, you know. Uh, number eight, Ruby. In 2017, I learned Ruby. In order to work with Ruby on Rails, I did some exercises. I, I got disappointed on Ruby very fast, and I just left it. I never built anything useful with that. I tried for quite some time, like uh, for half a, ye a year, and I tried to learn in a page called uh, codecademy.com, but uh, it was a really disappointing website, and the learning process was very bad. Um, uh, yeah, I, I can I can tell that uh, the people that created the the content for that website they are not teachers, so and they do have uh, <laughs> um, they don't know what they are talking about most of the time. They basically uh, they don't know how to teach this uh, the Ruby, and I believe that the case was because of uh, they are not teachers or they don't really know what they are talking about. And, and that's the sensation I got um, on those years anyway. Uh, Perl, I know nothing about Perl. C, uh, I did learn C way back in high school. Um, after that, uh, I pick up the, the official C programming language book, the white cover one. Uh, I, gave, uh, I make a read and uh, uh, I, I did the examples and I put it back, you know, uh, nothing to say about C, is, uh, is it still used? Yes. Uh, I don't have any idea of what jobs can you find uh, with C anyway. Uh, Bash, number 11, Bash, Shell, and PowerShell. Uh, these, are, these three are in the same bucket. Uh, basically, these are uh, scripting languages that run on their specific, on their specific, uh, how do you call it, uh, operated systems terminals. Bash and I, uh, Bash is basically for Linux. Uh, Shell and PowerShell. I think those run in in Windows. Most of the time, these uh, scripting languages are used to create uh, uh, jobs that are supposed to be running uh, every certain times. You know. You can, um, it's, it's like programming your old BCR. Wow, I'm really old. Uh, it's like, it, it, it is like programming your old BCR. You know what? I want to back up the database um, and the source code from Git uh, every once in a while, every Friday night when everybody has left for, for the weekend. 
then I'm going to back up the database and it's going to save this very big file into a NAS somewhere. All of that you can program using a, a, a bash script or PowerShell script uh, on Windows. So, uh, and I did a lot of that um, when I was uh, asked to basically keep uh, backups and, and I was too lazy to do it manually every single time. So I basically created a, a uh, a, a task, a program task uh, to do it for me instead of me doing it manually anyway. Um, okay, now uh, let's say number 12, PHP. I hate PHP. I tried PHP way back in the day, let's say uh, around the 2000s, the early 2000s. I, I got really bad experiences with PHP. Basically, nobody's code was readable and um, whatever you, you want to use another one's project uh, or modify that project to co to do something else, uh, it was really difficult. PHP code is very uh, chaotic, uh, least to say, you know. Um, I had never seen a source code in PHP that I can actually learn something from or use it to uh, in, in a different way, you know. So basically PHP, one of those programming languages that allows programmers to become uh, a cock in the machine, so to speak. So if you don't have the developer, the software is basically not going to change ever. Uh, Swift programming language to create mobile apps for the iOS operated system. Uh, that's the iPhone and the, and the iPads. Uh, I have, uh, I think that I, it was my intention to learn Swift when it was released. Uh, however, I never get around to buy a, a Mac computer. They are really expensive and they are really low end. They are really, really, they are not powerful at all. And, and I arrive to the same conclusion every single time, you know, uh, why would I spend uh, money on a math computer when with that same money I can build a gaming computer way more powerful than this computer is going to ever be and I'm not going to be al allowed to game on that PC um, I tried to play League of Legends way back in 2015 I believe in a Mac that I got from, from a job uh, and, and I got to jump through hoops in order to get that to run uh, and not a pleasant ex experience. And it wrote pretty badly. And, and we're talking about a game that runs pretty smoothly in whatever computer you install it, you know? Anyway, TypeScript number 14 is TypeScript. I know nothing about TypeScript other than uh, it is um, it's basically JavaScript with, uh, with four set data types, you know? Uh, that's all I know. You can create variables. Or, or properties, let's say. I, I hope there are properties there. Uh, and you can define, you know what? This variable is not going to be a variable, just a variable, generic variable. And, and the type of this variable is going to be defined during declaration time. So basically, if you create a, a variable in JavaScript, that variable data type is not going to be defined up until the moment you assign a value to that. Let's say you create a variable called name and you assign uh, my name, Jorge, to it, a string. So the data type of that variable is going to be a string. If you don't do that and you do something else like the variable name is going to receive a one, then the data type is going to be number. You see? However, in, 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 in forces type of languages like C, like, uh, and like uh, TypeScript, you declare a variable and you declare the data type. So basically that's all I know about TypeScript. It's basically JavaScript with types or forced types, may I say, because JavaScript already has types. Uh, it's just that you're, if you don't take care of the details very well, um, you may find yourself in positions where you are trying to compare two variables and, and it turns out that one is a string and the other one is a number. And funny things happen when you try to do that. Anyway, Scala, I do not know what Scala is. Up, uh, well, I do know something about Scala. I know it's, um, it's a secondary programming language uh, that 
that basically you can create programs that run on the Java virtual machine. It's basically a programming language that is a direct competitor to Java. It's easier to write, or I've been told that, um, and I believe that it was uh, at some point somebody got the intention of making a Scala the standard. Uh, that never happened really because there is a lot of legacy code in Java that needs to be maintained. Uh, but the Scala is very, um, it, it, it's not very demanded. It's, it's, in, it's in position 15 here in the list, but anyway. Oh my God, position 16 is Visual Basic. Oh, Visual BBA. I don't know what that is, the A stands for. I believe it's uh, maybe Visual Basic A something. I don't know, maybe Visual Basic. Number 17, R. Uh, that's an statistical programming language. I know nothing about it. Other than that, basically, uh, Objective C. I wonder if there is jobs for that anyway, because, um, I tried to learn Objective C and then Swift came out and I never finished learning Objective C. My intention was to buy a Mac computer and earn a living making uh, iOS apps, you know, as a freelancer. That never happened because I never bought the uh, Mac computer. Um, Objective C was the official programming language for making those apps. Uh, but the problem was that uh, at the time I was learning with lynda.com, I believe, um, from Simon Allardyce, and uh, very great course uh, on Objective C. Uh, it, it is a very complex and sophisticated programming language. It's not for everybody. It's really hard to, to deal with if you don't know what you are doing, basically. It's not uh, beginner friendly, so to speak. Uh, but anyway, Objective C was um, was replaced by Swift anyway. So if you are planning to build applications today, um, most of the time you are going to be working with Swift anyway. I wonder why are uh, are people still looking for Objective C people? Uh, I don't know. Number nineteen, Kotlin. Kotlin is for uh, for Java. What um, what Swift is for Objective C. Basically, Kotlin is the replacement for Java in the mobile world. Uh, you, you can learn Kotlin, you can compile uh, and run the programs in the Java virtual machine, but the main purpose of Kotlin, because that's the same story as Scala, basically. Uh, Kotlin and Scala are very similar in that way. They, are, they were created in order to replace the Java programming language, uh, and they didn't, they didn't uh, manage to do just that. Uh, but they became the de facto programming language, uh, in this case of Scotland, to develop mobile applications for the Android platform, you know. And last place is Go from Google. Uh, Go or Golang um, is basically, I tried Golang for like a month. Um, my impression on it was that uh, it's very similar to C++ without the complexity that C++ brings in the learning process. It's, it's, it's not hard to learn. It's really easy to learn. Uh, however, I, I, did, I did a couple of programs they run on my computer, you know, uh, but I haven't found an implementation that calls me because uh, I guess that if you are planning to work in the Google Cloud uh, platform, you are going to be allowed to use Golang more efficiently, I guess. Uh, I don't see what will I need Golang for. Uh, I, I, years ago, when Golang was new and was recent and was the new hot stuff from Google, um, that's when I tried to learn it. Uh, the only things that I knew were made for Goland that were uh, uh, of any use were, were basically uh, very fast static website servers. You know, similar to Apache servers and Nginx servers, you, are, you were allowed to create your own uh, web server uh, using Goland. And it was pretty efficient doing that. Um, 
uh, and a lot of projects were basically just that, a web server. <laughs> so if you want to build your own web server, Golang is your programming language too. Other than that, I didn't see any interest in making anything else with the programming language. There is a, a framework called Godot, which is basically a, like a bootleg <laughs> Unity framework for video games. You can make video games with Godot, and I believe uh, they use the Golang programming language to do that, but uh, uh, I saw some games made with that, th and, and they look pretty awful. Or maybe I just biased because uh, it's a video game doesn't look great. Uh, uh, I assume it's really awful, but uh, Balheim proved me wrong <laughs> there. <laughs> Looks pretty awful to me, but uh, the gameplay is, is amazing. I still play that game. Uh, anyway, that's the entire list of the 20 most demanded um, skills or software skills uh, that will get you a job. Number one, Python. Number two, SQL. Number three, Java. Number four, JavaScript. Number five, C++. Number six, C Sharp. Number seven, HTML and CSS. Number eight, Ruby. Number nine, Perl. Number 10, C. Number 11, Bash, Shell, and PowerShell. Number 12, PHP. Number 13, uh, Swift. Number 14, TypeScript. Number 15, Scala. Number 16, BBA. Number 17, R. Number 18, uh, Objective-C. Number 19, Kotlin. And last but not least, number 20, Go. Okay, so thank you for listening. Nobody came in live because uh, <laughs> Green Room is new. It's less than, uh, I think it's the second week already. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm uh, streaming these episodes live on, on, on this app. Uh, nobody's coming in because uh, obviously I forgot actually to post this link to Twitter now that I uh, think about it. But never mind, I'm going to record another episode right now. So I'm going to uh, remember that for the next time. Thank you for coming in and see you uh, right about now because I'm going to record another episode.